Brother David was mentioning uh, about the ones with cancer. Uh, I thought about this many times. I, I, one of my former pastors preached this past week at the state meeting and told the story of his mother. Just a, a little while after he was born, was diagnosed with cancer. And they come in and give, and it was in 1950, and they came in and they told her basically she had about two weeks. She died in 1997. He said that, they, you know, that they went home and got one of his uncles, and they were going back to the hospital there, and said they were going to pray with him, said the uncle told him, said, you got to pull the car over right now. He said, we'll be there in just a minute. He said, no, we're going to pray right now. He said, you got out on the side of the road, brother, thank you. He said, and got in touch with God on the side of the highway. And she lived in 1997. That's what God can do. Amen? If you have your Bible, let's take your Bibles and go to Luke chapter 15. This is not the message I have in, had intended to preach this morning, but God knows what we need. Amen? <clears throat> Luke chapter 15, if you're there, say amen. Let's stand in honor of God's word. Look at uh, uh, verse 3. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? When he hath found it, he layeth on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh, to his, cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. When she has found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice in me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and yet, and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Lord, we want, we love you. We just thank you, God, for your word. God, I pray right now, Lord, you'd have your hand on us. I pray, God, you would help us right now, God. God, to be able to preach this, Lord, in a way, God, that the people would understand what, what you're trying to get me to say, God. And, and God, I pray, God, you would touch my, my, my head, touch my mouth, God. Help it, the Lord, to be a blessing to you. And God, if there's one here that's not saved, one here that's backslidden, God, get them on this altar before it's too late. We'll praise you for all you do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Don't ask me what the title is because I ain't got one. We have three stories in this passage of Scripture. Most of the time, most preachers break this down 
and, and preach uh, each individual parable, and, and that's good. But I want you to notice something in the first two things that I read to you, how, how diligently they sought. And this is talking about God now. It, it, with, with the parable of the sheep and the parable of the coin, the Bible talks about how diligent that shepherd was to go out and find that lost sheep. And the Bible talks about how diligent that one was that lost that piece of money in the house, how they swept the house, they cleaned the house, looking for that piece of money. And I believe that's what God does for us. I believe when, when we get out of God's will, God will do everything in His power to get you back to where you need to be. God will, God will send person after person. God, I'm telling you right now, God will do everything in His power to get you back to where He wants you to be. If it takes putting a sickness on you, I believe God will do that. God will do whatever. God will let you go uh, so far. And God will keep blessing you after you get out of His will. To prove to you that He loves you. But if that don't work, you understand something. God will do whatever it takes to get you back to where you need to be. As I was reading this and, and thinking on this, and, and I got to thinking about that, that lost coin. That coin was lost because of somebody else. Coins can't lose themselves. Coins don't lose themselves. Somebody, somebody else, Brother Wayne, made the mistake of dropping it. Somebody else made the mistake of doing something, or or or, or, or something happened that that coin got out of place, and the, the owner of that coin could not find that coin. But the owner did whatever it could to go back and find that coin. Maybe you're here today, and you you got you've gotten away from God because of something else that happened. Maybe you're here today, and through, and, and I, I, I hate to say it like this, but maybe through no fault of your own. Something happened in your life. Somebody said something that upset you. Somebody said something and it's real easy to get hurt in church. Somebody said something that, that got you out of where you needed to be and all of a sudden you find yourself away from all the other coins. You find yourself away. You find yourself in a place the Bible says they swept that house. That means that that coin was in the dirt. And that means that coin was back in the dust in places it had no business being. How many of you here knows what I'm talking about? It's real easy to get out of the place of God and find yourself out there somewhere where you don't need to be. And maybe through no... Yes, it was your fault. You know what the Bible says. Don't give me that junk about where well, so and so's fault. No, it's your fault. I'm preaching about a coin, but I'm preaching to people. You knew. You knew. Don't blame somebody else for where you're at. You you made the choice. Not to stay. You made the choice. But maybe it was because of something else that happened in your life. Or something that happened in church. Or something that happened in your past. But it, it's got you out there. But understand something. The owner of that coin, it, it, it went through the whole house. That's what God will do for you. God loves you that much that He wants you back. He'll, he'll turn over everything in your life. He'll sweep everything out of your life. He'll make you so miserable that you want to get back to it. Now let's look at the sheep. That sheep, unlike that corn, made a decision to walk away. See, sheep, even though sheep's dumb, and we know that, even though sheep ain't got much sense, you know, like, like most of us Christians, that sheep, something happened, and that sheep, Made a best, made a conscious decision, Brother Benny, to leave the fold. Maybe they went this way and the sheep wanted to go that way. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe whatever. Maybe the sheep. The Bible talks about the, uh, leading me in, in the path of righteousness. And maybe the sheep looked over and he thought he saw a blade of grass over there that looked better than where it was at. So I'm gonna go over there and get the grass. I'm gonna go over there and do that. I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna go over there. And all of a sudden, now the sheep is completely out of the fold. And the Bible says that that shepherd loved that sheep enough. To leave that 90 and 9 and go out there and find that one that was lost. And I've, I've told you this before. I feel like I'm that lost sheep. 
I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. I made, I, there was a time in my past that I made a conscious decision to walk away from God. I got out there in the muck and the mire. I got out there in the brambles and the briars. And thank God I had a loving shepherd that loved me enough to lead the 90 and 9 and come after me and found me at found me where I was. He didn't stand on a corner somewhere Tommy James and say, hey, you need to come back to me. I can't get in that mess you in. Hey, you need to come back to me. You need to get things right. But, but praise God, if I was in the muck and the mire, he came down, got in the muck and the mire with me and pulled me out of it. You say, why would he do that? Because when Jesus gets in the muck and the mire, it don't affect him like it does you and me. He can pull us up out of the mire clay. He can set up feet on a solid rock. That's, that's how much He loves you. That's how much He loves you. You made the decision to walk away from Him. You made the conscious effort. And He loved you enough to go get you anyhow. Not like the coin now. The coin didn't know He was lost. See, there was, a, there was a time in some people's life, let me tell you, there ain't never been a time in my life, Brian, there ain't never been a time that I didn't know I was lost. I was raised in church. I knew right from wrong. I was raised in church. There ain't never been a time since I've come to a knowledge of what's going on, Alex, that I didn't know I was lost. But there's some people, Josh, they ain't like me and you. They weren't raised in church. They have no idea when you start talking about lost or saved. They have no idea who Jesus Christ is. That's what I'm, that, that could be compared to the coin, but that ain't me and you, Buzz Gunner. I made the decision, and they loved me anyhow. But notice the diligence, the diligence that the owner went to just to get them back. Now we come to the parable of the prodigal son. The prodigal son, the Bible says, that he came to his father and said, I want what's coming to me. This right here is blatant disregard for the authority of the father. Blatant disregard for what? For all he was raised about. He knew better. He knew, he knew better. He, 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 I'm just sick of it. I don't want no more of it. I want what's coming to me. And the Bible says that the father divided unto his children all that he had. And it didn't take long for him to say, hey, I got what I want. I'm getting that. You ever notice some people come to church and God get to blessing them and it seems like things start picking up in their life and they get to going real good and, and things start to doing real good and next thing you know they got their feet back on the, on the ground. God's give them a job. God's give them a car. God's give them a house. They, everything's going real good and so they decide, well, hey, I'm sick of this. Oh yeah, I'm on somebody right now. You were raised better. You knew better. And, and I'm telling you, you made the conscience effort to walk away from God. This ain't like the sheep. The sheep made a dumb decision. But I, you know, I, I, I'm going to take the sheep and compare that to a young Christian. I'm talking about somebody that you were raised in. You knew better. You knew what, that the Father loved you. You knew what, how, how much the Father had. You knew how much the Father cared about you. you and you made the decision. To go against everything that you were raised in. To go against everything that you knew better. And walk away. And the Bible says that it didn't take long that he wasted all. Preacher Tommy Bryson said all means all, and that's all all means. The Bible says he wasted it all, Brother Charlie, everything with righteous living. Huh, I got mine. I'm going to have me a time now. I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it, and ain't nobody going to tell me no different. 
away from the Father. Out there in the world, man. And the Bible says all of a sudden, the money's gone. When the money's gone, all the friends is gone. How many of you noticed? How many of you ever noticed that, that when you got out of church, when you got out of church and, and you, you started doing what you wanted to do, I'm with my friends now. I'm gonna do what I want to do. Hey, mama and daddy can't tell me what to do. Hey, God ain't gonna tell me what to do. I'm gonna have myself a time. And that time, you had your good time. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. And you had yourself a good time up to the point. When all them so-called friends you thought you had was gone. And you found yourself in trouble. The Bible says that he, he, he found himself, he was hungry, he didn't have anything. And he went to somebody in the foreign land. Understand, now this, this man, you reading the parable like you ought to, this man was a Jew. He joined himself. West to somebody in the foreign land. The Bible talks about when King David committed adultery. The Bible talks about that Nathan the prophet come to him. And the Bible said there was a wayfaring man that came and took the sheep of that one man. See, the problem with some of us, we've gone out into the, uh, we've gone out into the world, we've lost it, and we've joined ourselves to that wayfaring man. That wayfaring man is Satan. That wayfaring man is the one that's going to lead you down to destruction. He's going to lead you down to hell. You understand something? The Bible tells us that we have an enemy. His name is Satan. And some of you know what it means to be in church. You know what it means to live right. You know what it means to stand and teach and stand and sing and testify and feel the presence of God. And you're out there in a place that you don't know where you have. You look around, you don't recognize nobody. That's because you joined yourself to that wayfaring man. And the Bible says that this man sent him out into the field to feed the swine. That was the mo one of the most ungodliest animals that a Jew could be around. And the Bible says he did it. And he got so hungry, Brother Bill, that the Bible says he fain would have filled his belly with the hog food. Some of y'all been eating the wrong thing. But I thought about something as I was thinking on this. And Lord, dealing with, dealing with me on this. At, right after Sunday school, I thought about with the coin. Well, the man with the coin, the person in the house tore the house apart. Went out. So, with the sheep, the shepherd. Went over the hills and down the valleys and, and through everywhere. And, and the shepherd did everything he could and went out and found the sheep. The Bible don't say that about the prodigal son. I never... Notice something. It's the progression of the story. I was once the coin. I did stupid stuff. I was once the sheep. Amen? But I was also once the prodigal son. And I thought about it. The father, Matt, stays at the house. Because there's something. You listen to me real good this morning. Everybody look up at, at me. It comes a point in your life where you got to stand up for yourself. It comes a point in your life you got to say, "I messed up, and I got to go back to the Father, and I got to apologize to the Father. I got to, go, I got to go back and let Him know that I know I'm wrong." 
I'm telling you, every, every time, Brother Robert, that I was a corn and he went and got me. And every time that I was a sheep and he went and got me. And I'm telling you right now, he'll do everything he can to keep me in the fold. But I made the decision to walk away. I made the decision to get out there. And I'm telling you right now, you're so close to the high pen right now, it's not even funny. And God's been doing everything he can to get you back. And, but you've got to make a decision this morning. I'm sick of this, what I'm living in. I'm sick of being in the hog pen. I'm sick of this way I'm living. I know there's a better way. I know, I remember how it was when I was the coin. I remember how it was when I was the sheep. And I know I, I know I ain't supposed to be in this hog pen. I know I'm not supposed to be with this way, fair man. I know I'm not supposed to be here. I'm just going to make my mind up. The Bible says when he came to himself, preacher, when he came to himself, that means he come to a realization that I ain't supposed to be living like this. There's a better way for me. I got a father that loves me. And if I can just get back to his house, I don't want to be a son. I don't want, he ain't got to do all that. Just put me in the servant's quarters. That's all I want. I, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. But glory to God, when he was coming down the road, daddy didn't stay in the house then, glory to God. When he saw him coming down the road, the Bible said, as he ran to him down that dusty old road. He kissed him. He said, go get a robe. Go get the ring. Go get the shoes. That's what God wants for you to do. He wants you back. Understand that. He wants you back. He don't want you living like this. He don't want you hanging around the crowd you've been hanging around with. He wants you to come back. And the Bible says there was rejoicing over the corn. There was rejoicing over the sheep. And the party was on when the prodigal son got back. That's how much God wants you back. Why in the world are you happy in the home? That'd be a good title, Matt. Happy in the home. Why in the world would you want to live like that? And God's got so much better for you. Can you bow your head? They come give us a song. God, I love you. Lord, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for the time that I was that lost coin. And God, there's somebody in this church right now, God, that feels like that lost coin. God, they're still in the house. They're still close to the owner. But they're not in the fold. They're not in the bag with the other corn. God, I pray that you would help that one to get on this altar. And God, there's somebody in this church that feels like the lost sheep. They feel like they're away from the fold. They're out there in the wilderness. But God, help them to realize that the shepherd's looking. And he's here today. And he's calling for them. But God, there's still somebody that feels like the promise of sin. God, I pray that you would help them to realize God, if they'll come to themselves this morning, God, if they'll make up their mind today, God, there's a new road, a new ring, and new shoes waiting on you. Have your way right now, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you will, let's stand. What's your number? Won't you come? People's already on the altar. Won't you come? Come on. Don't let the devil defeat you. Don't let the devil talk you out of this. Listen, if you're the coin or you're the chief, he's going to do whatever it takes to get you back. Won't you come? Have your way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, prodigal son. Come on, prodigal daughter. Why do you want to live like this? Why do you want to live in the hot bin? God's dealing with you. You've been doing things you ain't got nothing to do with. Saying things she ain't got no business saying. Going places she ain't got no business going. That's what prodigals do. That's what prodigals do.